G'day YouTube, welcome back to the VK8 FOS YouTube channel. We're trying something a bit different today guys, we're, we're going to experiment with a different format of video. So I've heard the criticisms and apparently you guys don't like me just recording a silent screen recording video. Um, the reason I used to make those videos guys is because I absolutely hate annoying music in YouTube videos and like annoying like notepad typing. Um, I think it's just better to have a silent video and just make what I'm doing very clear on the screen so you guys can focus on that, but you guys don't like it. So this new format I'm trialing today is I'm going to be showing you how to use a software tool, but I'm just going to basically talk you guys through it. So yeah, let's get on with it, shall we? We're talking about satellite TV again today, guys. Um, more specifically, we're talking about cracking a, a encryption algorithm of satellite television. So BISS or BIS as we call it is a 64-bit encryption um, It's not really used for pay TV. It's more like a commercial kind of Encryption algorithm like it sort of scrambles maybe like a point-to-point -point satellite link um, That is displaying video for maybe like a TV station or like a sporting event like maybe it's a pay TV sporting event They'll use BISS encryption to scramble it so you can't basically steal the the pay-per-view match, for example. So, so it's, this is 64 bits, right? Which means it's well within the realm of being able to be attacked with something called Rainbow Table. So for people who uh, were into like following my GSM videos and stuff like that, will we'll know the term Rainbow Tables. So ra Rainbow Tables are a type of time memory trade-off attack and how it works is you basically have these large files called rainbow tables and they just have millions and millions and millions or perhaps billions of pre-computed hashes in order to crack the encryption key if that makes sense okay so they're just pre-computed tables which using some software they can just run through the the tables and maybe do some other same as GSM, you do some um, calculations and you can basically retrieve the encryption key. So again, I'm not a cryptographical engineer or software developer or anything, guys. So if I'm using the wrong terminology, I apologize. Um, but yeah, so let's get stuck into it, shall we? So more specifically, the tool I'm demonstrating today is called CSA Rainbow Table. So um, I'm more specifically, I'm using this one here. Okay, so you can see the uh, chances of Cracking the encryption key in version one is very good. And then um, version two, it's a little bit less at 84% chance of cracking rate. So that's a, a very high coverage of the possible encryption keys that we can retrieve using this tool. So um, yeah, that's really it. I'll uh, minimize this. And I've got all the software tools we need here. Um, again, it, Rainbow tables are very large. So the GSM ones were 1.7 terabytes. Uh, the, the ones for the BIS cracking tools are very large. So these are two out of three plain, plain text. I, I guess plain stands for plain text, I guess. Um, there's actually, yeah, there's three types of plain text. So I've only just downloaded these two here so far, and each of those are 1.25 terabytes. So you're going to need a large hard drive to store this kind of stuff. I'm using a 3.5 terabyte NAS hard drive. It's not an SSD, but it's still very fast. It's almost instantaneous for uh, just brute forcing one 64-bit key. So, yeah, it's very, very fast. So it uses GPU, right? It uses your GPU, <clears throat> Uh, in this machine here, I've got a GTX 1080 Ti. And why GPUs are used for cryptographical uh, calculations is because typically a computer CPU has like maybe you've got four cores or maybe you've got eight or 16 in the higher end, um, higher end CPUs. And that's it. Whereas a, but they're quite powerful, right? They're large, powerful cores in a CPU. Whereas a, graphics card has thousands of just little tiny cores which are really good at just doing mathematical calculations so that's why people use them for bitcoin mining and they use them for password cracking and stuff like that so i think the gtx 1080 ti has 3000 or more cores so 
you've got 3,000 cores each doing millions of calculations per second, you can see why they're so desirable for cryptographical uh, calculations. So yeah, that's very, very cool. So we're going to need, um, so, you know, you need to acquire the rainbow tables first, right? And the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need some software, which is, can just be downloaded from the homepage of the tools here. And basically the third thing we're going to need is an encrypted, this encrypted um, video file. So I've got this .ts transport stream file here. If I attempt to open that in VLC, nothing's going to happen because VLC does not know the decryption key to decode this data. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that using CSA rainbow tables. So, so yeah, once you've downloaded all your tools, you will go to, we need to first launch an application called CSA CD, CUDA server.exe. So I'm just going to double click on that. Put this down here. So the first time you run it, you've actually got to configure it. So <clears throat> I'm doing everything locally on this computer here. So I'm going to choose the first option and then I'm going to click start. And then once that is successful, it actually minimizes. So don't think that it's closed and oh no, it's, it's crashed or whatever. It just minimizes itself and gets itself out of the way. Um, so yeah, and the next thing we're going to need is we're going to actually need to launch CSA rainbow table tool itself. Very simple application. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. We do need this file here called chain author.map and you can just download it from here. And then, yeah, that's really basically all we need. So these two tools here, CSA, CUDA, CUDA, is it CUDA? I don't know how to say that. And uh, the rainbow table tool are both packaged in this zip here. So yeah, basically you just download these two things here essentially, plus your rainbow tables here. Um, the satellite, so this TS file here is actually got a plain text type of FFH and not 008. So these are all my rainbow tables here. As you can see, they're very, very large. And I've acquired all this data. Was it three, almost 3.5 terabytes? in the last couple of days. So I'm sure my ISP wants to kill me right now. Um, so yeah, that's just the rainbow tables there. Um, and yeah, so let's get stuck into it, shall we? So the first thing we're going to do is turn our attention to CSA rainbow table. I'm going to press new, and this is where we're instructing the tool to find the directory where our rainbow tables are stored. So I'm just going to press the find icon. All of my BIS cracking stuff is on the F drive. And I'm just going to be configuring these rainbow tables for the plain text type of FFH only. I'm going to press OK. And we need to give it a name too. So I'm just going to copy the that name there. Paste that there, add to list. And then we press OK. And then if you want to just double check if that was successful, you just press remove name and then we can see that there. So definitely don't remove it. This is just to double check to see if you successfully configured the rainbow table location. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to select a GPU to use. So we, get, we turn our attention to this sub panel here called settings and then GPU. And then we click add. And then we've got the CUDA server running locally on this computer. So we just leave this top option selected. We press OK. Then we can see my GTX 1080 Ti is being seen successfully by the tool. So, so far, so good. I'll close that. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to click on chain author. And then this is where we browse to this file here called chainauthor.map. So I'll click the open icon here. And then I'll browse to my working directory, which is here on the F drive, which is my 3.5 terabyte NAS hard drive. And then I just double click chainauthor.map. And then we need to confirm that 
version 4.15 is in use. And you can do that by hitting info. And we can see at the top here, version number 415. So, so far, so good. Press OK on that. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to now turn our attention to the job sub panel here. I'm going to press add. I'm going to double click on search CW settings. I'll just move this in here. This top drop down menu here, we select your more well, our GPU. In my case, it's a GTX 1080 Ti. I've had this graphics card for since 2017, and it is just an absolute weapon. It still plays all the all the latest games. It's crazy how powerful those things were. Um, and then I'm going to in the RBT name panel, it I'm going to put a tick in the box, and then I'm going to press start. And then we should hopefully see running appearing in the info section of this window and started should appear in the status column. So everything is going to plan so far. So we can close that now. So <clears throat> now what we need to do is we need to retrieve the crypt eight value. So the crypt eight value is another 64 bit value. It's not the decryption key. It, again, don't know what I'm talking about, um, but we need the crypt eight value to be extracted from the transport stream. And then we need that value to search the rainbow tables for the decryption key. It's essentially how that works. So if we turn our attention to the search sub panel, I'm going to click C8 icon, move this over here. And then I'm going to browse to the root of my F drive where my encrypted TS file is located. So I, I, I created this uh, trans like this dump of a satellite TV transponder on a satellite. So it's a TV channel on a satellite. A lot of the TV satellite TV decoding applications have a option to record data. So if you find a encrypted channel on a satellite, you can you can't you need to take a recording first, and then you need to crack it, and then you enter the key into the TV decoding. Thing. You can't actually use VLC to watch this file after we have decrypt uh, after we've got the, the encryption key. So I'm going to press open on that. And then I can see here that we've I've got my dump.ts file here, and then I'm going to press start. Now it's given us a heap of values. Um, so I'm going to press control A and I'm going to copy the entire lot. And then I know a lot of these are actual duplicates. So I'm going to run it through just an online free duplicate removing applet. And then we can see that there's been 509 duplicates. So, so yeah, I'm just going to copy that now. We don't need this anymore. So we can close this. So all these are the crypt date values that we're going to feed into the cracker utility, essentially. So we can close that now. <clears throat> and what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn my attention back to the CSA rainbow table window. I'm going to add a job. And this next job is different to the previous one we selected. We, we're actually going to search for the CW. I think CW stands for control word, control word, which is, yeah. Okay, so we need to do some configuration here. So I know for a fact that this dump, this t transport stream has a plain type. I think it's I think it's plain text type of B eight HX FFH, and then we're going to just select RBT only in the search option. I'm going to click clear this text here. I'm going to paste the 12 lines that I removed the duplicates for. And then I'm going to press add. And then I'm going to press start. And this is going to start the cracking process now. So this might take 
It's actually really, really fast. I thought that it would be very, very slow on a 3.5 inch hard drive, but I guess because I've got my GPU doing all the calculations, it's really, really fast. I don't, I don't, not sure how much faster an SSD would be, honestly. Okay, there we go, it's started. So of course not all of these are going to bear fruit, guys. Obviously there's only some, maybe one will be the crypt date that we can derive the encryption key from. Decryption key, sorry. The control word, CW stands for control word, so. So the first couple takes a little while and then as it works through the list, it appears to speed up. Well, it did when I was testing this today anyway. There we go. We've got one key. Oh, we've got two keys, but they're both the same. So it looks like these two values were identical anyway. And it's and it's ended up finding the encryption key for us. So yeah, that's really very, very, very cool. I know for a f I've done this previously, so I know for a fact that none of these are going to bear fruit. So yeah, basically that's the uh encryption key. Which is uh yeah, very, very, very cool to get this stuff working anyway. So um not that I'm going to do anything with it. I just enjoy using these tools. Um, so yeah, I guess that'll, this is, none of these are going to, all of the, from here, here on in, it's just going to say not found, not found, not found. So that'll be a good point to probably end the video now. It's 17 minutes. Um, yeah, again, I've, I've got to say some disclaimers. Yeah, don't steal pay television, please, doing this stuff. That's not cool. Um, yeah, like, don't use my videos to do anything naughty, please. This is just for educational and experimentation purposes only. If you like have an interest in amateur cryptography, such as my, such as I do, I like to do this stuff in a laboratory environment only. Don't steal pay television. Um, there's a reason you pay money for pay television, you know. So if you want to support the television stations and the sporting events that you love, don't steal them using this tool. So, yeah. Okay, I reckon we'll end the video there, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you later. I hope you guys enjoyed the new format too. Bye.